Hi, this is Joe Toy and welcome to my video series on tools and techniques. Today I want to talk about the mouth atomizer and introduce uh, those of you who are not familiar, familiar with it to it, give you a little bit of information about it and why you would use it and how it is used. Um, that you, When you look for a mouth atomizer, you can purchase several different types and I'm going to talk to you about those. Basically a mouth atomizer is what I call a poor man or a poor woman's airbrush and what it basically does is it will spray paint for you but instead of using a um, air compressor you're going to use your own good old lungs and I always tell my students to think about blowing candles out um, when on a uh, cake when you were 30 and you have 30 candles how you have to take a breath and then blow and that's what you want to do with these mouth atomizers you basically place your mouth here, you place this tube in uh, very diluted, thin paint, and you, you blow. And the action of this um, air going across this tube will suck the paint out and push it out, which isn't that amazing that that works? I, I'm really amazed. This is called the Venturi effect, and I'm not sure if Mr. Venturi uh, created it or developed it, but what it does is it produces pressure, and that pressure uh, pulls the paint up. The reason why this atomizer may not be your best choice is that Although you can find it very easily, you can find this in your art stores, your craft stores, some of them, and online. And it's usually about oh, 6 to $8, I believe. The reason why this one doesn't work as well as some of the other ones I'm going to show you in a minute is the fact that it has this large orifice here. And because you're trying to build up pressure to pull the paint up, that larger orifice um, doesn't help us too much uh, to do that. So um, this is an option and some people have uh, difficulty even making this work with very, very thin paints. It definitely will not work with the white paint very well, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But if you're gonna spray very, very thin paints, this is a very affordable option that you can try. And um, it, it, some people can get it to work, I can get it to work, and some of my students can't. The other uh, problem with this is when you go to spray, you have to get this angle, the angle of this to this, just right. And of course, once you get it right, um, it's really hard to keep it there because um, it bends like this. So that is one option. The other option is this beautiful atomizer here, and this is a Pat Dews atomizer, and this is very, I've had this for probably 12, 15 years, I'm not sure how long. It's very well made, it's out of brass. Um, this rod here makes it very stable and um, prevents it from breaking. And this is a wonderful atomizer. You can spray um, just about anything with this atomizer. Now. All that said, oh, and you can get this atomizer, I believe, I know you can get it at Cheap Joe's, it's right about $40, and other places might have it, but I know that they have it. Now, this is our atomizer, Jeff makes this, so I call, my husband Jeff makes this, so I call it Jeff's atomizer, and there, the reason why I had Jeff make this for me is because of the unique way I spray in my studio, and I happen to spray white paint. Um, most of the time rather than transparent uh, inks and uh, diluted acrylics. When you spray white paint, white paint is the hardest paint to spray because unlike your diluted acrylics and your high flow acrylics and your inks which just contain pigment, this contains particles that make this paint opaque and therefore it is thicker and is harder to spray. So when I started spraying white, I said, Jeff, I really need something that's really optimized to do that so that it didn't take as much uh, force to uh, spray it. So we did a couple things with this atomizer. We um, made sure that this tube here could go as far down into the bottle as possible. The advantage that gives you is that when you have, when you're able to get this tube down farther into your paint, you have paint in this much of your tube. Therefore, when you go to blow, you only have to uh, push the paint up just this cup inch here before you'll push it out. If you, that was a, a small problem I had with pats. It still will work with white, um, but you see 
because of this brace to make it stable, it only goes into the paint this short distance. So therefore you have to be able to be pushing hard enough that this paint is sucked up this tube before it's sprayed out. So Jeff uh, changed that so that we have a nice square, uh, very stable tubing here that prevents it from breaking, but gives us the option to have a longer tube that can go in, down into your paint. The other thing that we did with our atomizer is that we made this tube a, a little bit shorter than this. And if you can exaggerate this a bit, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Imagine that this tube is three feet long and you go to spray at this end of it before it the air gets to here to suck it up. At three feet, a lot of pressure is gonna have been lost here that will aid in sucking that uh, paint up into that tube. So we made this a little bit shorter because of course it will have less, um, need less pressure. The other thing that both of these have that aid in spraying is that it has a smaller orifice here and therefore it builds up the pressure and uh, works better. Now all that said, Pat's works great when you wanna use very um, fluid, uh, acrylics and inks um, and you can see her work she does a beautiful job with that um, this if you're gonna spray whites this has just been optimized for it and you can spray white with that it's just a little bit harder just because of those uh, details that I was talking to you about. So let me just tell you a little bit more about that mouth atomizer. You can spray, um, these are the things that you can spray with it. You can spray high flow acrylic with it. I'm not talking fluid acrylic, I'm talking high flow, there's a difference. Fluid acrylic is too thick to put your tube into and spray, it will not spray. You have to take your fluid acrylics and add water and dilute them. And you can put them in a jar like this and then spray out of it. Uh, this is actually a little bit too long to spray it. I guess it does go down there, so that, that works. Um, the, uh, the way I collect a lot of the diluted paint that I have is when I pour uh, paint, and I've already diluted it, I'll often have a paint left. So I got these bottles with these little tight caps on here, and I pour my excess, my leftover in here, and then it's always ready to uh, spray if I should need to spray some colored paint. The other um, product that works very, very well is um, your, any of your inks your acrylic inks, um, even your India inks can spray really well out of uh, all of the atomizers. A little bit harder with that bending one. The other thing you can use is your watercolors. You can take your watercolor, put it in uh, some kind of small container, add water, and you will have um, a very fluid paint that can be sprayed. So when you're spraying these thinner paints, uh, the high flow, the ink, the uh, watercolor, or your diluted acrylic, you don't have to worry about having the longer bottle because even though um, the tube is only going to go in here this far so you only have paint up to here, these are thin enough that they'll just spray out very, very easily. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you're going to spray white, I really suggest that you buy the four ounce bottle of the high flow acrylic. And if you want to spray white, be sure to get the high flow, Golden's high flow acrylic. I have tried so many things. Please trust me. I'll save you tons of money because you'll go buy six things before you find one that works. And the one that will work is the high flow. I don't get any money from Golden. They don't even give me any free products, but I got to tell you, this is the best thing to buy. So that's basically it on the um, mouth atomizer as far as what it is and um, the different paints that you can use with it. And I will be in the next video, I'll be showing you actually how to use it, demonstrating it. And then in the third video, I will show you how it can be used in a painting. So thanks for joining me today. And I hope this has been valuable to you. Bye-bye.